Hi there, welcome to tip four. Um, I hope you're finding it really interesting so far. You can do an awful lot to help yourself out when you figure out exactly where your body is at the moment and what you need to get back into a more neutral position and take some of the strain off the areas that are working just that little bit too hard. Most of the hip problems that I see are down to muscular imbalance, which change the angle of the joint that it sits at. You then end up with wear and tear. And a lot of people go through and they will have x-rays or scans on the area and they will get told that there's wear and tear there. The problem with having any sort of procedure on that, so any type of surgery, is that it fixes the irritation that's caused by the joint being in the wrong place, but it doesn't actually fix what caused it in the first place. And so it's really important to take a step back and actually find out where you are and you know, if I had a preference, I would always go for a non-surgical approach first and try and get back into a better position with the body. And generally, most things do heal when you give them the right space. So we talked about forward and back previously. We talked about going to the sides, right and left. Now I want to talk about something that you're probably going to find really surprising. And that's our big toe. So up into standing. Now... Um, if you're in standing and you just have your feet hip distance apart, I just want you to raise and lower your big toe. And so some of you will find that quite difficult to raise on their own. And so it doesn't matter if the other toes come up. Now just raise and lower them several times and really tune into what your foot feels like as you do it. So do you feel that you've got tension when you do it somewhere? Do you feel like you've got any aches or pains that crop up and that could be anywhere in the body as you're doing it, not just in your big toe? And we should also feel when the toe lifts that you get your arches should lift up a little bit and when you lower the arches drop back down again. And so if your arches are rising, you'll tend to go back into your heels into the sides of your foot. And when you release, you might find that you drop forward and in. So just Notice whether the movement at your big toe is the same on both sides. So a lot of people have restriction here, but no pain. And it's really important to make sure that the big toe can move. And I'm going to show you why. So when we take a step and we're walking, if I go to step forward, if you look at my back foot, my toe has got a bend. So essentially it's doing the exact same thing we were just doing when we were lifting it. It's just staying in contact with the floor and a reverse action is happening. So as my heel and the rest of my foot comes forward, my toe's got to bend. Now, if my toe can't bend that far, I'm gonna to have to put more strain on my hips to actually walk, and it's gonna end up with a little bit more restriction. So what you'll find is that your stride starts to decrease and the muscles around your hips really tighten. So I hope you can see that the impact of having a toe that doesn't move, especially a big one, um, can really change your hips massively. And so when you go to work on big toes, there are lots of little strategies that you can use to try and help that. Um, one of them is just actually as we were doing there now, where you just start to take a step forward, allow the foot to come up and bring your weight back. And so just gently rocking forward and back. And so just allow that front knee to bend and allow the back leg to stay straight. And all we're doing here is just gently rocking forward and back, only with the intention of getting more work through that big toe, more movement. And so if you find that you have got a toe that's stuck or stiff or uncomfortable, just be mindful that you only need a little bit of movement to change it. And so start small and gradually build. And so when you get the big toe moving more, it takes a lot of the strain and a lot of the effort off of the hips. And it also allows them to open up and move because if the hips have become quite restricted, then the ball and socket joint isn't going to have a lot of space to move around in. So for your hips, one of the biggest things you can do is make sure that the big toes can move. So have a go with that and I can't wait to see you tomorrow for the last of the five tips.